MSA friends, I'm Rain from Belgium, and this is my journey. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. New MSA merch alert. Our latest bottles and notebooks are out now. Grab them via the link in the description and upgrade your gear. I've lived in an orphanage for as long as I can remember, wishing for a family of my own. My mom was still around, and she was, well, a bit different. She couldn't take care of me full time, but she'd pop in now and then with her wild stories and crazy outfits. One time, she showed up during lunch with a huge purple cape covered in shiny bits, telling everyone she was on a secret mission. Rain, my star! You're glowing today. Must be those good mashed potatoes. Then, right there in the middle of the room, she tried to make a spoon float in the air. Okay, so she was holding it with a string, but we all pretended to be shocked anyway. When she hugged me goodbye, she slipped a small rock into my hand. A piece of the moon for you. It was just a regular old rock, but in her world, it was something magical. You might think that the kids made fun of me because of my mom or something. Nah, let me tell you that I was respected and feared in the orphanage, along with my friend Leo. Leo and I were like the bosses of the orphanage. When we walked by, kids would stop talking and make room. Everyone just kind of knew to stay out of our way. One day, Leo and I were headed to our usual bench in the yard, where a group of kids were celebrating their good grades with a big cake. They saw us coming, and the laughter stopped. They looked at each other, then at the cake, and without a word, they got up to leave. We're leaving, I swear, but is there a chance we can take the cake? The whole thing seems a little much, don't you think, Leo? Tell you what, we will give you the big, huge third, and we will only take the tiny, two small thirds. Oh, thank you, really. You guys are cool. I've been dreaming about you both. They say you dream about people you think about a lot. Wait, is that peanut butter in there? You know what, just take the whole cake. I can't stand and peanut butter. Yeah, this is how things were back then. One afternoon, when we were 12, as Leo and I were planning our next prank, the warden called us into her office. She told us we were getting adopted by the Morgans, a rich family with a pool and a daughter around our age. I was excited, but also scared Leo might like the new sister more than me, so I blurted out, no thanks, I'll pass. But they want to adopt you both. That's their condition. Why do they want both of us? Who cares? We're getting our dream, being adopted together. And don't worry, I'm not gonna love her more than you. No rich girl can match your wild craziness. So I gave in. When the Morgans came to meet us, they were super nice and smelled like flowers. Look at you two. Just adorable. Leo was practically starstruck by the Morgans and began spouting off random facts to impress them. Did you know the country is pronounced Iran and not Iron? Also, I'm a whiz at geography. And hey, fun fact, the earth isn't round or flat. There's a big chance it's shaped like a donut. I hung back, not saying much, but there was one thing on my mind. Where's your daughter? They pretended they didn't hear me, so I asked louder, and they looked a bit hesitant to answer. Then the mom just said that their daughter Emily was sick. I'm not an expert, but that looked like a lie. Even though the Morgans were nice, something about them just felt weird to me. Leo thought I was making a big deal out of nothing. Chill, they've got an awesome pool. Why are you so crazy about the pool? You're not a sea dog. Hey, I don't mind you insulting me at all, but please keep your voice down. I have a reputation to maintain around here. I just shrugged. Whatever was going on, we were moving to the Morgan's place in a month. A month flew by, and then boom, Leo and I were at the Morgan's. It was wild, like stepping into a movie with their huge house, and yes, the epic pool Leo wouldn't shut up about. We had a blast that summer, splashing around and living it up. The Morgans even signed us up for a fancy private high school. Everything was pretty awesome, except we hadn't met Emily yet. Emily's spending the summer with her aunts and France. She'll be back when school starts. A week before school started, Emily finally arrived. She walked in with her suitcase, looking totally different from what I'd pictured. She was our age, but acted like she was something else. She had this snobby vibe that got on my nerves. And well, it was hatred at first sight. I could tell we weren't going to be friends. Hi, Emily. Sweetie, how was your flight? Mom, stop asking me about my feelings. Just ask sensible stuff, okay? I'm not a little kid anymore. You know, you you are a kid, and don't snap at your mom like that. If you want us to get along, you've got to be nicer. Who are you, anyway? Emily, these are the kids we've adopted. Remember? We talked about this. I know why you brought them here, but I'd prefer if they didn't talk to me. I already don't like them. What reason could that possibly be? Let's just say it's better we don't talk. My IQ is 151. I'm a genius. You and I, we're not on the same level. Nope, that's not how it works. 
I'm the boss around here, and you'll do what we all want. The boss? Please, act your age, not your shoe size. Mom? Dad? I'm going to my room. Just bring my dinner there. Who did she think she was? Treating us like we were beneath her? Kids, don't take it to heart. Emily is unique, and she can be tough to deal with. But give it some time. She'll adjust. I'd rather go back to the orphanage than deal with this nonsense. Rain, come on. It's not that bad. I can't stand her already. I think I even hate her. Leo leaned in, whispering. Guess we can both hate her together, huh? He was spot on. I wasn't about to back down. I was the boss, and I would make sure to teach Emily who was running this place. The first week of school was tough. Emily seemed to have everyone charmed with her smarts, and Leo and I felt like we were fading into the backgrounds like nobodies. But we weren't giving up that easily. One weekend, the Morgans went out, leaving us three at home. I was still super angry because of Emily's attitude, and I decided it was time to make a point. I glanced at Leo and said, Watch this. I snatched Emily's laptop and dashed outside. I heard Emily's footsteps pounding after me. What are you doing with my laptop? Without a word, I flung the laptop into the swimming pool. It hit the water with a loud splash, sinking quickly to the bottom. Oh my god! Why would you do that? That's what you get for thinking you're above us. We're in this together, whether you like it or not. I left her there and walked back inside. Leo caught up to me, whispering, You know this means war, right? But to my surprise, Emily didn't do anything. She didn't even tell her parents when they were back. So I continued. I started by hiding her favorite shoes and replacing her shampoo with green hair dye. Then, during dinner, I'd imitate her snobby tone, making Leo <laughs> snicker. Each prank was my way of showing Emily she wasn't the boss of our new home. But she never reacted or even told her parents anything. After weeks of our pranks, Emily started doing something unexpected. She was being nice to Leo. One afternoon, she helped him with a tough math problem he'd been struggling with for hours. I saw them laughing together, and something twisted inside me. What's happening? I thought we were in this together. I know, Rain, but she's really good at math. She just wanted to help. So that's it? She does one nice thing, and suddenly she's not so bad? It's not like that. Maybe we've been too hard on her. But you said we'd hate her together. I know, but maybe Maybe it's time we gave her a chance. How dare you! I pounced on him, throwing punches, when Emily jumped in to save him. I swung at her too, but just then, my parents burst in. They pulled us apart and kept calling me for a family meeting, but I ignored them, including Leo, the dumb traitor. A week later, Leo approached me, looking serious. Rain, I hate seeing you upset. Tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. Anything to make things right. Fine. You want to make it up to me? Then wreck her precious science project. She needs it for the competition tomorrow. And without it, she can kiss her chance to go to NASA for summer camp goodbye. Rain, that's extreme. She worked so hard on this. That's exactly why. I do it myself, but it's too heavy and I don't want to hurt my back. Reluctantly, Leo agreed and sabotaged the project. The next morning, when Emily discovered it, she was in a panic, but only for about a minute. Then she calmed down and started to repair the project, hardly showing any frustration. And yes, you guessed it, she didn't tell our parents about this either. Turns out, Leo didn't do a good job of destroying it. Emily managed to fix it in just half an hour. I was convinced he did it on purpose, so I swore I'd never speak to him again, even though he kept saying sorry. Just go hang out with your new sister. She's all you need, right? Rain, come on. We were a team at the orphanage, cool and respected, but now you're going too far. I didn't listen to him and just walked away. A few days later, Emily won her scholarship, and the Morgans planned a huge celebration. But Emily, in her her usual snobby way, insisted that I go to bed early and not attend the party. It was so arrogant of her, and it made my blood boil. The night of the party sounded amazing from my room. I could hear the laughter and voices, with Leo out there having a blast, that idiot. Then I had a brilliant idea. I called mom and told her we needed her show for the party. She arrived 20 minutes later. I was expecting her to ruin the party with her silly acts, but then Leo sent me a photo on Instagram. To my surprise, everyone was actually in enjoying mom's performance. Ugh! That night, I decided to try a new tactic. I'd be nice. My plan was to get close to Emily, understand her better, and then, as her friend, I could easily manipulate her to become her boss. The next morning, I prepared breakfast and took it to Emily's room. Everyone was shocked. Did you put poison in this? Want Leo to taste it first? Leo showed up from behind her door. Obviously, he was eavesdropping. No thanks. I want to stay alive. To my surprise, Emily said the breakfast was delicious. From that day, I was nicer to her. I even tricked Leo into keeping Emily busy so I could set up a birthday surprise in her room. In reality, I wanted to snoop through her things for answers, but I found nothing. Weeks passed, and I was getting along better with Emily. I was secretly 
constantly messing with her, though, like turning off her alarm so she'd miss her weekend lessons and hiding her homework. But I was done with petty pranks now. So one morning before school, I came down crying frantically. I, I can't find my necklace, the one mom gave me, the gold one. I've looked everywhere. I swear it was on my side table. I can't lose it. I just can't. It's the only thing my mom's ever given to me. Everyone in the family comforted me and helped me look, but obviously no one found it. I cried some more on my way to school and kept crying in class too. Yeah, it's a talent I have. I can make myself cry whenever I want. Leo and Emily looked really worried, and as we were heading out for recess, I decided to put the second part of the plan into action. I reached for the gold necklace that was in my pocket all along and pretended to trip over my shoelace. As I tried to break my fall, I grabbed Emily's open bag and it came tumbling to the floor with all its contents spilling out and in the chaos, I purposely dropped the necklace too. I slowly crept to the necklace and picked it up and Emily's eyes went wide with shock. This, this fell out of your bag. You stole it? How could you do this to me? Green, hold on. Maybe we should talk about this later? No, Emily, you are the biggest witch I've ever met. You have everything, your fancy parents and your fancy brain and your fancy house and you just can't share all that with anyone, can you? You hate having me around so much. You decided to take away the one precious thing I had to. Who steals from an orphan? Only someone heartless. A crowd had gathered, and then the principal walked in on the scene and took Emily with her. Ha! Miss High and Mighty would surely get suspended now. But when I got home, I found the entire family gathered in the hallway, standing next to my packed bags. My biological mom was waiting too. Sweetie, I'm so happy you can live with me now. I'm doing so much better with my new meds so I can take care of you. You're moving out. Rain, I know what you've been doing. I tried to make you feel like family, but you need to leave. You have problems. What? I didn't do anything. We know everything, sweetheart. This has to end. Oh, great. So living with my crazy mom will fix everything? That's not a nice thing to say. Maybe if you were a better mom, I wouldn't act like this. And you guys, you're no better. You let Emily boss us around. No, Rain. Emily was fine. I mean, not the greatest, but also not evil. You need help. Help? You all think I'm crazy? Fine. I'll show you crazy. Then I stood there for a bit. We're waiting. Well, I wanted to attack one of you, but that'll prove your point that I'm crazy. I'm not, but I like things to be under my control. Always. Come on, Mom. Let's go home. These people don't deserve me. Weirdos. I went with Mom, but honestly, I missed the Morgans a lot, including Emily. Leo and I kept in touch. I thought living with my biological mom would be the hardest part, but I was actually learning and thinking about new things. One day, after Mom's street performance, a girl asked her, Can I be brave like you when I grow up? Bravery isn't just about doing daring things. It's also about being kind, accepting others, and understanding that we all have fears. On our way home, Mom talked about her past, how she pushed people away and felt lonely. She wished she had learned the importance of connection sooner. I was so busy being different, Rain, that I didn't realize I was alone in my own world. For the first time, I didn't see Mom as just crazy. She had her issues, but I realized it's never too late to change. She had improved, and now she was raising me with love. Then it hit me, and the next thing I knew, I was apologizing to my adoptive family. What I did was wrong. I'm not asking to come back. I want to live with Mom, but I want us to be friends. You're forgiven. We're more than friends. We're sisters, and always will be. I hugged everyone and left for my first therapy session.